Pleasant evening to you and a warm welcome to News Hour here on the Serenium Broadcasting Corporation. I am Victor Jones. Coming up in this edition, Speaker of Equals Parliament, Honorable CD Mohamed Tunis, has called on Member States to uphold the best international practice to enhance democratic good governance in the sub region. Councillors and Mayor of Freetown City Council boycott 2022 financial year budget hearing process of the Council. And the Office of the Ombudsman trains staff on the mandates of the Office, alternative dispute resolution and other related matters. But as usual, these are many of the stories led up this edition of News R. But first, let's take our corner preventive message. You see where them people here wear the mask then fine? Well, now so you self for wear your mask. Go by you know send you much autumn we did near other person. Well, get yourself vaccinated, continue to mask up and stay safe. COVID-19 is still around. Now, following deliberations on the high level interactive parliamentary seminar on the two decades of democratic elections in ECWAS member state, the Speaker of ECWAS Parliament, Honorable City Tudors, has called on member states to uphold international best practice to enhance democratic good governance in some region. He made this proclamation at the closing ceremony of the high level interactive parliamentary seminar in Guinea, Ghana. Our reporter, Joseph Ture has more. Key among recommendations following the deliberation in Winneba, Ghana, included revision of ECOWAS protocol on democracy and good governance in order to prohibit the various forms of political maneuvering to hold on to power beyond constitutional limits. Compliance with the quota or gender equality system to enhance women's representation in decision making bodies, even at ECOWAS Parliament. Incorporation of democratic and good governance initially into school curriculum to deepen democratic culture and values, adoptions and implementations of an early warning mechanism to enable her to prevent unconstitutional changes and undemocratic means of coming to power as well as other means of undermining democracy. Following the reading of the report, key observations were made for consideration by authorities which included please engaging all stakeholders ahead of elections. The police and the electoral police will have early engagement to work on the modus of programming and everything associated with it. Police security about you from uh, the Gambia, Sierra Leone and also Ghana. One of the key things that they have elaborated on is the responsibility and the role of the police in monitoring and some exercise and activities in the communities. But the that's have no limit. So look at some of the recipe for chaos. So we could just look at that a little bit and see how we can do it. That are not exceeding two constitutional many or two terms like all other countries except for the Gambia region. It was also emphasized that media and CS would have crucial roles in democratic processes like elections, among others. Speaker of ECOWAS Parliament, Honorable Dr. Sidi Mohamed Tunis, described the issues of elections and direct universal suffrage as very vital to democracy. He underscored that the outcome of the deliberations will provide insight for conduct of peaceful elections in the sub-region. We were able to come to terms with the fact that although there are shortcomings in our electoral systems, such shortcomings can be remedied by adopting best practices. We still believe that one of the best yardsticks for measuring democracy is the conduct of periodic elections 
that are considered credible through meeting best international practices. Furthermore, elections should necessarily provide good and inclusive governance. As a community, we have strong faith in the ECOWAS supplementary protocol on democracy and good governance and urge member states to incorporate its relevant provisions into national legislations. The move by the community parliament has been considered as being proactive in ensuring peace and good governance in the sub-region. SLBC, Joseph Ray reporting from Winiba, Ghana. Now to observe the Breast Cancer Month and raise awareness about the life importance of the early detection and regular breast checkups, the Rotary Club, in collaboration with the Rotary Club of Freetown Sunset Club and Well Woman Clinic, has organized a walk tour. The walk tour started at the Golf Club and ended at the Family Kingdom. We apologize for that. Now, the Minister of Water Resources, Philip Kamlansana, has given assurances that the government has developed a water sanitation and hygiene policy that will ensure sustainability in the airwash supported project in the country. He affirmed this during the launch of the Wash National Business Plan 2021 to 2025 project to be implemented by the World Vision at the Bintanari Conference Center in Freetown. The SLBC is Aruna Kamara. Osmo. The five years project is aimed at addressing wash challenges in the country. According to World Vision National Director Sergeant Chow, water, sanitation and hygiene is key in World Vision's agenda for the next five years. Rich, over the last five years, more than 250,000 people with clean water, more than 150,000 people with dignified sanitation, and more than 650,000 people with improved hygiene across the district of Bo, Bolt, Kujeun, Kono, Kwenalu, Falaba, Western Rural Area, and Western Urban Area. The progress made has been possible thanks to the ever improving commitment of the government and the combined efforts of the civil society organization, the development partners, the private sector, and most importantly, the communities we are serving. Eric Masali, NGO Director, Ministry of Development and Economic Planning, and Director, NGO Relations, Ministry of Health, Suleiman Food and Musa, respectively, said they are fully supporting the five years watch business plan of World Vision and pledged their ministry's strong supervisory support to ensure the project succeeds. They said creating access to clean water, basic toilet facilities, and good hygiene are the way forward in keeping every scale union healthy adding that working together with their partners in the wash sector to ensure quality and sustainable work are part of their topmost priority as a government. The Corporate Affairs Manager, Sierra Leone Brewery Limited, Albert Ojo Collier, said through Heineken African Foundation, they have been able to support Sierra Leone with over 10 billion loans in addressing education, health, water and sanitation challenges in the country. He pledged their continued support towards World Vision's goal in addressing wash problems in the country and commended World Vision for always providing quality and standard implementation of their projects. The Minister of Water Resources, Philip Karimo Lansana, said the government is aimed at achieving the Sustainable Development Goal 6, addressing wash challenges in the country, noting that government has developed a wash policy to ensure sustainability in the wash sector. I'll be part of the process from the World Group. We want to train you when the train is moving. We want to start from the beginning. Because uh, what we should also do was when they the drafted this, uh, this uh, business plan, they took it to us. We had discussions with them. We gave input to them before they organized it. And then they told us 
to be part of the, the launching, which I gladly have accepted because I knew that it was not new to me. And I have read the content, I find it impressive because it took all the components into consideration, especially the issue of sustainability. He lauded World Vision strategy for always consulting the ministry in ensuring they are part of the process from inception and commended them for always supporting governments in difficult times. Chairman, Parliament Chiefs and other development partners commended World Vision for championing wash issues in the country. For SBC News, Aruna Kamara reporting. As part of its commitment to take justice to the doorstep of the people through a circuit approach, the judiciary of Sierra Leone has for the first time held a high court sitting in Kwangju town in Kailang district. The law according to the judiciary of Sierra Leone aims to deliver justice and tackle the many problems people are faced with in a town bordering both Guinea and Liberia as sister countries. The SLBC's Abdul Kabir witnessed the landmark occasion. Koindu town is best known for its warmth and vibrancy among the towns in Sierra Leone. But over the years and to date, the residents here have been managing their own affairs as a people through the customary ways to settle disputes. But there have remained many cases that require access to the constitutional justice system. In this view, the judiciary of Sierra Leone has a show of fulfillment of justice to the people of Kisiteng chiefdom as for the first time taking a circuit court to the doorstep of the people of Koindu town in Kailang district with a high court sitting presided by the Kailang district resident high court judge, Honorable Justice Francis Banks Kamara. In his brief statement, Justice Banks Kamara said he is ready to fully deliver justice to the people of Koindu Town and also call on them to equally support him in his quest to dispense justice as and when necessary. Here today is not a dream, right? But to fulfill that promise made three years ago by his lordship. I mean, I think more. Baba Tunde Edwards, Chief Justice of the Republic of Sierra Leone. It's also to fulfill the promise I made a few months ago to the people of Kailan District. Stakeholders within the township were extremely delighted for the historic court sitting and pledged their commitment to see the full implementation of justice. Parliament Chief Emmanuel Numa Ganawa, the third of Kisiteng Chiefdom, Thanks the judiciary of Selim for the timely move. This is a show of solidarity by the judiciary of Selim to take justice to the doorstep of the people. Meanwhile, the people of Koindu town in Kalabi State embraced the mobile high court city for the very first time in their history. Residents of Kisiteng Chiefdom greeted the historic court city with huge delight as they have been craving for such an opportunity for a very long time. As one said by Martin Luther King Jr., injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. For SLBC News Hour, Abdul Kabir. Now, councillors and mayors of the Freedom City Council have boycotted the 2022 financial year budget hearing process of the council. The boycott, according to the mayor of Freetown City Council, Ivan Aki Sawyer, resulted from the failure of the sanitation department of the council to present their 2021-2022 financial year expenditure budget to the council for scrutiny. Our reporter, Emmanuel Samura, was there. The process commenced in a very good and peaceful atmosphere as councillors state and non-state actors, traditional authorities, among others, seated to be briefed on the council's budget for 2022 financial year. Representatives from the Ministry of Finance and the President's delivery team also gave statements on what they expected to see in the budget. When the mayor, Yvonne Akisoya, was called to give statements and open the process, she started off with very good words, but in the middle of her speech, 
she started highlighting the challenges of the council as to why they could not achieve most of what was promised in the 2020 budget hearing. Shockingly, the mayor even Akisoya announced their discontinuance of the process because of the failure of the sanitation department to present the budget before the council's budget committee. Me, the mayor, and the councillors will never participate in this hearing until we get a presentation. I and the councillors will not participate in the hearing until we get presentations from the sanitation department and until we get confirmation that we will be able to raise funds to deliver on what we promised to do for Fritonians in 2021. The announcement came as a shock to all in the hall especially when the mayor and councillors were leaving the hall. Tension rose in the hall as participants and other officials who were left in astonishment started asking rhetorical questions as to why they were disrespected in such a manner. After several consultations, the deputy chief administrator of the Freetown City Council, Peter Koma, pleaded with the participants and said they will communicate to the public as to when the hearing will be conveyed. The boycotting actions of the councillors and mayor and the reasons advanced for their discontinuance to the process might tempt one to ask what will be the fate for the city of Freetown in 2022. Emmanuel Samoa, SLBC Freetown. So, a three-day retreat, which is supposed to be held by the National Youth League of the main opposition, All People's Congress Party, was put on hold due to a court injunction. This retreat started at some point, but was unable to be completed. The incident left many supporters disappointed as they believed that the retreat was a befitting platform for members of the party to unite and to address the shortcomings among some party members. The former president of the Republic of Sierra Leone, who also doubles as the chairman and leader of the All People's Congress, Dr. Anest Bai Kuruma, had made his statement to supporters of the party. But unfortunately, the supposed three-day retreat organized by the National Youth League was cancelled as the party was said to have a court injunction. In observance of the International Ombudsman's Day, the Office of the Ombudsman organized a two-day training of staff on the mandates of the Ombudsman Office, alternative dispute resolution and other related matters. The theme for this year's celebration is to explore options to resolve conflicts together. Daphne McCauley was at the workshop at Hill Valley Hotel and now works. The mandate of the Ombudsman Office is to provide public defense, serve as watchman over the law, citizens' voice, and county law. But over the years, the office is not recognized by the citizenry. We do a lot of outreach. You must have been seeing Ombudsman Hour on TV and on radio and television skits. So, but we have seen a lot of good results. Um, since I took office in about 2018 to now, we've already concluded about 1,396 cases. That is about the same number that the, for the whole period of the existence of the office. So for, for a period of about two to three years, I have matched the numbers going from 2007 to 2018. So what that tells me is that there is a new confidence. But how will the function of this office be known to the public if its staff are yet to be capacitated with its mandate, hence the need for this training of staff of the office? Capacity building is a, is a benchmark and a hallmark um, of the office and of this government. You must have heard the president talk about human capital development. Every time he speaks, he would speak about that and we are following the trend and we believe to get an improved ombudsman office, the staff have to be knowledgeable and so this is just ongoing capacity training to give them the required skills and to look at the work we do and the best we can do it. Since the establishment of the office of the ombudsman, there have been three ombudsmen. 
and the country's first ombudsman was Francis Gabidon. Mr. Francis Gabidon said that the office of the ombudsman is a powerful job, but Africa has not been allowed to do its job because it will cut down on maladministration. We have allowed in Africa to really do a job. The ombudsman of Ghana, Mr. Schultz, had so much problem with Jerry Rollins that Jerry Rollins stopped the country from giving the money, had to get money from the Scandinavian countries. Because when you really look at the mandate of the Ombudsman, it will cut down so much maladministration and problems in the country that successive governments are not too keen to allow people to perform that role. He said the office lacks collaboration with other offices for the execution of its mandate. The two-day workshop is expected to bring staff up to speed with the mandate and building a cordial relationship between the office of the Ombudsman and the public. For SLBC News, Daphne Kimamakoli reporting. As part of the European Union's outreach to communities to encourage environmental sustainability and the reduction of plastic pollution, the Sailing Association of Journalists and the European Union joined the Mayor of Freetown and National Tourist Board at Lonely Beach to remove much of the garbage they discovered. Harold Williams has the report. Sierra Leoneans are still practicing unsustainable methods of depositing their garbage, especially plastic waste material which travels from improvised dumping sites along bridges and waterways and ends up in the ocean. Unfortunately, some of the pollution is retained in the marine environment and also comes back to the beaches. The mayor of Freetown, Yvonne Akisoya, said the council will be relentless in correcting this situation. Go to www.findmeinfreetown.com or call check out 8244 on Orange or Apricel. If we don't want the garbage to come from the ocean onto the beach, then we shouldn't put the garbage from our houses into the ocean. From this exercise, the Ministry of Tourism through the National Tourist Board will now have a new set of tools and the Freetown City Council will have tricycles donated by the EU. In addition to the skills training, many waste collectors will also receive on behalf of the EU. European Union Ambassador to Sierra Leone Manuel Muller also insists that the exercise is not a one-off event. At home I'm cleaning every day even if it gets dirty again. This is quite clear. Cleaning is necessary and um, cleaning at the beach clean event is also mainly for showing that it's important to have a continued effort to do that. Um, if you want to have a clean beach, you have to clean every day. And um, if you want to have a clean beach, you should also look on where waste goes to. And if you want to have a clean beach, people around all over the world should use less plastic. There's the equivalent of one lorry of plastic each minute, which goes into the ocean. So, and some of these bottles or whatever then arrive here or at another place. Um, this is a problem and we wanted to uh, raise awareness uh, to this problem. The European Union during the last two years has given the support to the Freetown City Council in uh, terms of uh, waste and waste transportation. Uh, we are very happy to see that uh, the Freetown uh, Council is uh, going to continue to work on that. And uh, we are very happy that we have seen that today at this event, which was done together with the National Tourism Board and uh, the Freetown City Council, and uh, many friends from diplomatic communities, but also Freetonians from every walk of life, uh, uh, to show up uh, to raise this awareness. And um, we uh, are very happy to see that there is a lot of engagement and uh, we only can uh, encourage uh, um, all uh, the people to continue to do this work. And the work starts at home, the work starts in the garden, the work starts in the surroundings. Um, cleaning and avoiding waste is something that everyone uh, can do. And so there are many things which are easy to do. And, uh, 
that's also what we wanted to show today. The um, tools we have been using today for the beach clean will be handed over to the National Tourism Board. They have the responsibility uh, for the beaches so that they uh, have uh, some other tools for their facility. The Sierra Leone Association of Journalists is partnering with the EU to train journalists to raise more awareness about environmental solutions and sustainability. President of Sludge, Ahmed Said Nasrallah, also says the beach cleanup is not a futile effort. As journalists, we need to raise the awareness, we need to advocate and we need to uh, um, educate the people so that they become aware that what they are doing is harmful to the ocean and is harmful to their own livelihood and survival. There is a huge gap between the attitude and correct practices of waste disposal that can be bridged by knowledge. Such knowledge is going to come from members of the fourth estate, but the collaboration of the government and citizenry will be essential to correct the tragic error of placing human waste into the environment, both in Sierra Leone and throughout the globe. The Ministry of Tourism and Cultural Affairs and the National Tourist Board are developing a designation market and branded strategic plan document. The proposed draft document paints a different picture about the country's heritage, culture and historical monuments. It also aims to position the hospitality and tourism sector in an innovative and digitally dynamic state which will attract more tourists and add to the country's economic growth. Jonathan Turner reports. As the tourism industry continues to change at an unprecedented pace alongside constantly involving travelers and tourism behavior, the impact of sustainability and living in a hyper-connected world needs a strong branding and destination strategy that will stand the test of time and remain competitive. The Ministry of Tourism is making immense contributions to make the hospitality and tourism sector attractive using an innovative, digital and dynamic approach. Stakeholders in the tourism sector say destination marketing and branding is about using approaches such as crafting, developing and nurturing a unique identity for the destination, preposition, heritage and values. The problem we have is effective flight system, lower cost. Yeah. Now we have a lot of places that are popping in the sub-region and a very good internal transportation system. If you have those two, people will come. That's why we are working with Air Senegal, we are trying to work with others. We are trying to go back to where we stopped before the COVID, working with our partners in the transport sector so that uh, we can work with the airport people. The strategy. Marketing, branding, and branding, as we all know, in any business is the backbone to increase your sales. As a professional in the field, we work in marketing and branding every day. Without marketing and branding, you will not be able to sell anything. So indeed, it is a very important and key area in the tourism sector. The destination marketing and branding is driven by three main factors which represent the fundamentals of a destination brand, repetition, identity and perception. As a country, we have our national tourism strategy policy, we have our eco-tourism policy, we are under the same project trying to develop a lot of other policies, including the tourism master plan. And as I speak to you, under the EIF, the Enhanced Integrated Framework, we are also developing, reviewing our tourism development at all into a national tourism act. That needs to be done. The legal framework, the policies needs to be established. The, the draft document, when established, will set the foundation for marketing activities designed to promote the destination and attract new visitors, content and messaging that will play a pivotal role in selling the good image about the country's heritage, culture 
and historical monuments. For SLBC News, Jonathan Tona reporting. The Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development has held a consultative meeting to reorient its sector heads, councillors and all the local government representatives about the decentralization policy. The policy seeks to promote coordinated efforts from all local heads to ensure national development. Julian Kuruma has the details. The decentralization policy is considered as vital to improve engagement in the governance of the country and reducing poverty. The policy came into being in 2010 and it gives directive to the Local Government Act. The meeting of these local heads reorientates them on their directive and how to enforce coordinative development. Alex Bonifer is the director of decentralization, Ministry of Local Government. So what we have actually done is to ensure that these structures are now part of the regional coordinating committee which has met metamorphosed to it's been metamorphosed now before it was the provincial coordinating committee now all of these persons will sit together in one box and they discuss on issues relating or bearing on service delivery security health challenges in the community or the locality that we call the district council locality then they can trash it out, they can solve it. If they cannot solve it at that level, then they can escalate it to the interministerial committee. Addressing the sector heads that were present at the meeting, the resident minister, Northwest Region, Haja Aisata Abdullahi, said these new structures will ensure all sector heads uphold their duties. The sectorial heads of the state, we've seen that there is a gap between the sectorial heads and the, and the council itself. Most sectorial heads... Uh, do, do, they do not come to meetings, they, are, they do not uh, look at the, the, the councils as if they, are, they should be partners in whatever they are doing. It's the only time you see them coming in is when funds are available, they are ready, they are asking the, the, the councils to, busy, to, to sign so that they can remove the funds. And most times, if, when they are not working with the councils, the councils themselves are reluctantly refusing to sign. So most times it's as if Everybody is sabotaging the other. So for us coming in as resident minister and representing the government, we want to see that that bridge that has been created, artificially been created, we want to mend that bridge and see how best we can put those things together. We collaborate and then we see that whatever it is that will benefit the people of Sierra Leone and the region as a whole, we need to do it. These new structures will enhance the productivity of local heads and ensure quick address to issues relating to local government. SLBC News R, Julian Kuma. The Syrian police has told newsmen that the operation to restore order in the country is in progress and will last for a month. Regional Commander Freetown West AIG Victor Williams said the operation is set to ensure that people move about in peace. Esther Sako reports. The operations by the police referred to as Operation Restore Order is set to remove traders from the streets and footpath so that there will be easy movement of people around the country. It's clear, living in the marketplace, the traders have returned to the inner part of the market. The vicinity is calm and quiet, but thanks, because I have seen monitoring and I have seen patrolling the streets. Traders should go away from this part and the street. Let them go to the market and go away from the street. For us to have a decent traffic and sanity in the street. AIG Victor Williams said they started the operations four days ago and have succeeded in combating the traffic along the region's road normally axis. Other crime in the country, the police mentioned the recent theft at Rokel Commercial Bank and cases of public nuisance wherein some people were arrested and helping the police with investigations. SCP Brahma Kamara, head of media, said unlawful possession of small arms is on the increase. He said one person had been caught. Yeah, Akiwa, greatly attached to Octia Mining Company. Arrested one just some viewer in possession of a pistol but without ammunition. The coat of Charles Sombrewer 
and from that point, the officer seized or took in possession the bag from him and brought the suspect to Taco Police Division Headquarters. The operation Restore Order is an operation that will be extended to the eastern of Freetown and other parts of the country. SLBC News, Estes Ako reporting. Minister of Western Region, Nabila Tunis, has paid a courtesy call on the regional minister, Great Accra. The meeting was geared towards having first heard information on what obtains in that part of the sub-region regarding embarking on development strides, collaboration with local council, among others. Joseph Ture witnessed the event at the office of the regional manager, Greater Accra. Well, uh, it is hinged on uh, security uh, in this thing or discipline and order, uh, education and sanitation. It was hopeful that much is gained following such engagement with sister Western Region ministries in the sub-region. The Ministry of Western Region was established months ago to collaborate, monitor and evaluate government programs in the Western Region. SLBC Joseph Ture reporting from Accra, Ghana. All still to come on weekend news. Minister of Western Region Nabila Tunis pays corpse call on Regional Minister Greater Accra. Public procurement price norm promises value for money and reduction of leakages in all public procurement activities carried out by MDs. Keep watching Weekend News with Big Victor Jones. Welcome back, y'all, with Weekend News here on the Selling Broadcasting Corporation with me, Victor Jones. We are continuing with the news. Every year, the Auditor General's report identifies public procurement as one of the grey areas wherein huge amounts of money are unaccounted for by ministries, departments and agencies. To nip in board such shortfalls in the public sector, the public procurement price norm has been launched by the National Public Procurement Authority to ensure value for money and reduce leakages in all public procurement activities carried out by NDAs. Ibrahim Samura witnessed the launch at the Ministry of Economic Planning conference room on Tahu. Now present to you the fourth quarter price now for 2021. This was the fourth quarter 2021 public procurement prize norm, which was put together by the National Public Procurement Authority to guide ministries, departments and agencies in their public procurement undertakings. The prize norm is a legal requirement that guides procurement practitioners to obtain value for money and was published on a quarterly basis as provided for in the Public Procurement Act 2016. More than 70 new commonly used products were added in this fourth quarter and the items ranged from foodstuffs, electrical and building materials. I'll tell you authoritatively that in 2019 we spent 1.28 trillion on procurement in Sierra Leone. Why are we doing this? We're doing this because we want the people of Sierra to know exactly how the funds are spent. And one of the mechanisms we can do to ensure the money is spent properly, it's not me, it's not them, it's the law. And be mindful, we are governed by law. If there is no law, the tendency that we have anarchy in our country is high. So if you have laws, then you have the laws. Director of Procurement Directorate, Minister of Finance, Fudi Kone, underscored the importance of the prize norm in addressing leakages and enhancing transparency in public procurement. We are launching the prize norm because we want public education. We want people to be aware about the strategic nature of the prize norm within the context of the core principles of procurement. 
and one of those core principles is transparency. We deprive not the public practitioners and suppliers will be able to understand the value and cost of items the uh, taxpayers' money are used to undertake procurement. So the price mark is strategic in rendering that particular state, uh, rendering that particular outlook to the public. The introduction of the price norm resonates with President Bill's campaign manifesto to reduce leakages in MDAs and increase transparency and accountability in all public procurement activities. So to increase the knowledge of the public on the importance of standards, the Deputy Minister of Trade and Industry, Reverend Abraham Sisi Jones, has launched a multi-year campaign on standards. The campaign will showcase ways in which standards contribute to the success of the Sustainable Development Goals and he launched the campaign during the celebration of World Standards Day. Emmanuel Samura has more. World Standards Day is marked to raise awareness about the importance of standardization in a global economy among consumers, regulators and industry. Standards ensure the capability of people to travel efficiently, access fresh water, cleaner energy and ensure standard safety and security measures. During a tour of the facilities, it was noted that the labs were very cold, equipped with different machines, and also there were samples of different types of products they collected from their clients and have tested. Launching the campaign, Deputy Minister of Trade and Industry, Reverend Abraham Sise Jones, said the country is relatively comfortable taking into account the current economic turmoil in other parts of the world. He noted that the standards developed and adopted by the Sierra Leone Standards Bureau provide sustainable solutions to the technical challenges of the country. The intense battle against the persistent global pandemic revealed the absolute necessity of addressing the SDGs in an inclusive way to strengthen our societies, making them more resilient and more equitable. In this pursuit, standards are more relevant than ever before. Executive Director, Sierra Leone Standards Bureau, Professor Thomas Yuma said, standards are an agreed way of doing things to ensure fitness of purpose, which they have been doing over the years. He said they have not been able to adequately discharge their duties and sell the idea of a standard to the populace because of the challenges they face. Over three years now, we've been lamenting about the lack of field vehicles. Field vehicles are those that enable the effective and professional collection of samples. At the moment, we, we analyze samples that cost our clients bring to us. This man will always try to bring the best samples they have for testing. Sierra Leone standards be many believed should be in charge of ensuring standards are maintained in all products that come into the country. But shockingly, the executive director of Sierra Leone Standards Bureau, Professor Thomas Yoma, disclosed that they are not in charge of food, cosmetics, and medical products. Issues dealing with self standard medicines and cosmetics now fall on the plate of pharmacy board. The Food and Food Safety Authority is now responsible for all food safety issues. Unsafe food, substandard food, issues related to those should not be directed to the Food and Food Safety Authority. Having listened to the challenges raised by the Bureau, Deputy Chairman of Parliamentary Oversight Committee on Trade and Industry, Honorable Charles Abdullahi, pledged their support in ensuring that the Bureau surmounts its challenges. Emmanuel Samoa, SBC Freetown. Hundreds of affected fire victims at Susan's Bay community have expressed gratitude to Caritas and the government for their relentless support since the fire incident occurred in April this year. 
They made this proclamation at Susan's Bay when Caritas went to provide them with foodstuffs, like materials, and local kitchen utensils worth millions of limbs. Sita Kamara reports. The huge fire incident in April destroyed dozens of houses at Susan's Bay and stripped the residents of their normal lives. Since the incident, life has been a living hell for these people. However, the government and several other charity organizations have been pouring in support to alleviate their suffering. Caritas is among the many organizations that has rendered help to the fire victims. These are cross section of the affected victims who are set to receive a wide range of distribution from Caritas. The donated items include forms, bags of rice, stoves, sugar, and other learning materials and cash to pupils. I feel fine. I'm glad you tell it again. I feel good because Caritas has been with us since the outbreak of the fire disaster. This item will help me greatly as I was not expecting it. If I was to buy them, it would have cost me a lot of money and can't even afford them. May God bless them. Uniform, good pot, pot, oil, per mind, yabas. I really, really feel it, yes. Because I'll not be ever busy. I'll never expect sense in the area of the business. I was giving foam, foodstuff, stove and other items. They will help me to push my life to another level. I appreciate the government, Caritas and all those who have supported us since our tragedy began. The selection of these beneficiaries was done by the Disaster Management Agency. Molu Briwam is the Deputy Director of the Disaster Management Agency. Once disaster occurs, we go to the communities, we do rapid assessment and registration. You know, we use tablets, we use drones to uh, locate the areas and uh, talk to people. Then we do verification, you know. Prior to that, uh, it's been chaotic, which is why we came in and it is timely that government instituted this uh, agency. You know, we, we make sure that you are verified before any item is given out to you. So uh, that is what we do. That is the magic about it. Managing Director Carita said since the first incident, they have been supporting the fire victim and they targeted the most vulnerable. Victims that are qualified in the various conditions in which we give this aid. So today we are giving them a variety of package of household things, mattresses, food and, and cooking it in Chelsea's to help them to start off life again. The relief distribution was carried out by Healy International, Tuzi Chi Foundation, Lani and Caritas in collaboration with the National Disaster Management Agency with support from government. For SBC News, Cynthia Kamara reporting. Let's now take some entertainment news. Hello and welcome to entertainment news with me, Cynthia Kamara. This year's Big Sister is going to be inclusive as the fifth unveiled roommate for the Big Sister Empowerment Show Season 3 is Anabino. Her name is Wala Mohamed Denke, a potential university student. She said her hobbies are cooking, reading, singing and dancing. She is an executive member of the Student Association of Persons with Abilism, which seeks to advocate for rights, respect and dignity of people with albinism in Syria. Her bestie is Elizabeth Martha Squire and she is also a person with albinism. They have been friends for years and have gone through thick and thin. Elizabeth said her own hobbies are singing and dancing. Well, we look forward for the unveiling of the other roommates. And to the Expo 2020 in Dubai. The event is a global event dedicated to sharing top-notch innovation, showcasing around breaking interventions to the foundation, challenges facing humanity, and also Expo celebrates human brilliance and connect people from across the globe. Expo 2020 is the first to be held in the Middle East and South Asia. Sayo is part of the event and our citizens who were there to represent the country have made excellent presentation and showcased our culture. Let's have a feel of their performances. <laughs>
within the shell of Sierra Leone. John Newton was enslaved in Banana Island. It was on this island, inspired by the breathtaking beauty of Sierra Leone. <laughs> And the SLBC's Abukaria is all set for sports. Thank you so much, Victor, and it's a pleasure. In this edition of the Sports News, SLBC and AID played to a one round draw in the a thrilling friendly encounter, the much anticipated match. So, a very good approach from the two sides. Let's look at it. Cut C of AYV. What a day it was for the two teams in a very exciting field. They come to that. Now, in the international scene, Liverpool defeated Watford by five goals to be able to quite a show for Watford. They had so many important opportunities, but Liverpool emerged as the winner at the end of the day. We saw three goals from Firmino and of course Sergio Mani and Musala with the goals for Liverpool and for Sergio Mani he has marked 100 English Premier League goals. He has joined the ranks of the top English goal scorers in the Premier League so far. He is one of the players to count on terms of scoring fantastic goals. And also it was disappointing for all the teams but for Liverpool they had an emphatic victory over Watford today. Chelsea equally had a winning way and they continued with their winning ways. And for Manchester United, it was a disappointing 4-2 defeat.
to Leicester. Disappointed we did. We'll continue to keep an eye for you on all the sporting event and tomorrow we'll be the updates on Serenian's female national team preparation. They've ended their first training in Liberia. Details of that are coming up in a subsequent edition of the Sports News. I've been Abdul Kabir. Victor, that's your sport. Thank you very much indeed, Abdul. Well, I am personally elated indeed that the, the match didn't end the other way around. Of course, surely we've been hearing all sort of bluffs on social and mainstream media. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Well, to end the weekend news tonight, a recap of our top stories. The Speaker of Equas Parliament, Honorable C. Amit Tunis, has called on member states to uphold the best international practices to enhance democratic good governance in the sub-region. He made this proclamation in Ghana following deliberations on the high-level interactive parliamentary seminar on the two decades of democratic elections across member states of heart. Councillors and Mayor, Freetown City Council have boycotted the 2022 financial year budget hearing process of the council. The boycott, according to the Mayor of Freetown, Free Freetown City Council, given Akisoya, resulted from the failure of the Sanitation Department of the Council to present the 2021-2022 financial year expenditure budget for the Council for scrutiny. And the Office of the Ombudsman strained staff of the mandates of the Office, alternative dispute resolution and other related matters. Well, I thank you very much indeed for spending part of your evening here on the SLBC 4 weekend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.